All right. I am real excited to talk to my next guest on the Sports Card Shop uh, guest line here on Sports Card Nation. He is doing podcasting uh, in a different sort of way. We're going to definitely uh, talk about that. And um, around my age, we have similar kind of uh, likes and uh, really, really hits home uh, with me. It's uh, the rated uh, the rated rabbi, Mr. Dave Spinrad. Thank you for for being on the show today. Thanks, John. It is uh, it's so awesome to be here. You know, I'm just looking forward to this for weeks, ever since you first reached out to me. Uh, and I've been a, a longtime listener to your show. I really I appreciate you. I appreciate your voice in the hobby. And you're actually one of the first podcasts I discovered when I got back into it a few years ago. I have this really distinct memory, actually, of being on vacation with family out in California, listening to the pod and uh, know exactly where I was. And I remember you were talking about... Um, a dream you had about opening a shop in Cooperstown. And I just, this wasn't something I was planning on mentioning, but when we started, I just had a flashback to that memory. I think that would be one of the coolest things ever to have a, a shop in Cooperstown. Yeah, that was before David Adams opened up. Well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> ah, they ruined it. <laughs> they beat me to it, but Man, uh, it's a good yeah, idea. I mean, <laughs> I'm only 70 minutes uh, from uh, Cooperstown, uh, Rabbi David. So I try to get there at least three, four on, on a good year, even six times a year, depending on events. And and so I'm lucky. I guess I'm fortunate to be uh, so close. And I've been there more times than I can count on wow. on two hands. It's a it's a magical place. Um, yeah. And you know, to me, it's the perfect place uh, to have a card store. Although there are some more popping up popping up i think they heard that podcast yeah, like you did idea, man. So let's get there <laughs> let's get there before before newman does and so the rest, <laughs> the rest is history but uh still a magical place and uh uh you know and for hobbyists for baseball fans uh, it covers uh both of those yeah. checks both of those boxes and uh yeah. I, ha I gotta ask I'm, I'm assuming you have but i don't know have you been to cooperstown yeah, you know, I was. Uh, we were talking before. Uh, before I was a rabbi, I was a I was a personal trainer, and before that, I was a bartender. And I was actually a bartender in New York City. And, and uh, I remember it was just after the baseball season ended. It must have been like November of '95 or '96 with a girlfriend and my brother who was visiting, and another friend. We went up to Cooperstown, did a day trip. And the thing I remember, John, is I remember that there were grown men in full uniforms, just like two guys in full Cincinnati Reds uniforms. Like, is there a game? It was raining mid-November. My girlfriend said, no, dummy. They're just dressed up as Cincinnati Reds at the Hall of Fame. She couldn't get over it. I personally, I thought it was kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's cosplay. It's yeah, cosplay for right. baseball, right? Instead of the Star Trek uh, convention. That's right. And it's funny. They have, you know, a double-day field, which is just a couple blocks away from the hall itself. Yeah. They they have the Hall of Fame game there. Um, they have uh, high school teams play there, and I, I've never been, but I know they have like old time games where you know obviously current folks will dress up in the old time baseball oh, uniforms. Old. Yeah, cool. and and with yeah. the old gloves and like recreate what baseball looked like in the eighteen late eighteen hundreds. What's the oldest uh, sort card of like they have? do with like Civil War? Do you the have oldest any like, card old have? judges or anything? Yeah. No, the oldest card I, I have, and I, I got it this year in, in 2023, and it, it actually kind of, I don't want to say made news, but it kind of came to the forefront recently with the whole Jefferson Burdick. Um, uh, we got to talk about thing. that. That's on my list. Okay. All yeah. right. And so this is actually, and I'll, uh, for those watching on video, you can see this. Uh, this is an 1890 on, uh, Honest Tobacco uh, uh, card. Yeah. And it's an actress. Uh, there's no name on it. Uh, attempts to find out like an actual name is almost impossible. Even wow. even with Jefferson catalog in it, there's no there's no. So I you know oh, cool. I apologize. I mean obviously I'm I'm she's not with us anymore. But to her like I don't know who it is. Yeah. But the the, the what's famous about this card, if you will, if you look at the back. Yeah, you can see where the it's been ripped out of a book from yeah. and it's got glue, glue dam. This is yeah. from 
Jefferson Burdick's own collection. No way. Yeah. So I think that's that amazing. Was pretty cool. Wow. And you can't see it. You won't see it. You could see this if you had like a loop or a magnifying glass yeah. and you had it in hand. There's two stamps on it. There's one right about uh -huh. here. And again, I'm just kind of uh, approximating uh, that say it's from the Metropolitan Museum uh, exhibit that was wow. sure. uh, located by by Jefferson. I just happened to have it on oh. my desk when you, you – that's the oldest card I have, it, and Maybe. it's 1890. So it's 133. Wow. Uh, years old and but, but for me it's more the provenance of of who owned it uh totally. it went to the met it went to the met and then uh you know uh you know that sort of thing so can just, i ask you I, i'm a yeah go ahead go i want to ask i want to ask you about um going and, and cleaning jefferson burdick's headstone because it's it was really moving and you know from the jewish tradition it's a it's a it's a mitzvah it's a sacred responsibility to do what you did uh to honor our dead and i just felt like it just it just transcended just anything that's normal like hobby cards it was on this it's on this next level and i just wanted to say thank you it was really cool well i i appreciate you saying that rabbi dave i'll give you the cliff notes and and because this you're the guest and not me but i i do appreciate you you saying that and I actually made the assumption. I just wrote an article for for Sports Collectors Digest about it, and and in the article I said, I kind of made you know he was born in 1900. No one knows exactly what year or date, but just 1900. He passed away in March of 1963, okay. and he died in New York City. Okay, and so I just made the wrong assumption that he's buried somewhere in New York City in one of the cemeteries there, and if. Being from New York, I know there's a lot of cemeteries. So yeah. unless you know exactly which one, and even then, to find a, a grave in a, in a very large cemetery, unless you, unless they have a map or they have like it numbered, yeah. it can be very difficult. And unless or unless someone who already knows where it is says, you take two lefts here, then a right, and then it's sure. you know that's. So I made the assumption, uh, and I'm making this story a shorter than it, it is. I made the assumption that he was in New York City. That's where he died. He never married. He never had children. Uh, he was sort of a kind of a loner, uh, if you will. And I just figured, you know, he's probably buried, you know, in right. in, in New York. And that's yeah. that's unfortunately the end. And and in, 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 in a way, that was sad uh, in itself too. Yeah. Um, and but you learn right never to assume and it recently came to my attention that he was buried where he was born which is central square new york i'm in in syracuse new york well central square is only 15 miles Psh. north of here and i said you know knowing what he meant to the hobby rabbi david i said i want to pay my respects you know you, you mentioned that I, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, uh, I feel the same way i said i want to Pay my respects, have a conversation with him uh, at the graveside, kind of tell him thank you. Um, the hobby's doing well, and you're a you're a, a good reason why, and that sort of thing. Totally. But now I have to figure out where the headstone is. I can't yeah. just wander Amos. Plus, it's a little weird to see a guy walking. <laughs> you know, That's so true. I I so I went <laughs> on on the website, and uh, there's this thing called find the grave. You can type yeah. someone's name, especially. If they have a little celebrity or they're, you know, they're, they're, they're known for something. And surprisingly it came up. I wasn't sure, you know, how, how, how deep that went and said Jefferson Burdick Hillside Memorial Cemetery knew exactly where the cemetery was. Um, and it said plot, you know, section 44, yeah. which is great. But sometimes, you know, like I said, the, 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 the place, the, the website might tell you section 44, but if the cemetery itself doesn't have a map or or number their sections, again, you Walk that could it. be anywhere. Yeah. So when I turned in, when I turned in, I went up on a Saturday morning, told my wife, hey, I'm, I told her what I was going to do. Yeah. And she goes, all right, you know, that's pretty cool. And so I went, I turned in and literally on the street you turn in on, I saw like a, a wooden sort of overhang and there was a map of, of the cemetery. So I nice. pulled over. Look for 44, and they even have you know when you see maps it says you are here. Yeah, they even had, they, they, they even mean. had that, so I knew it's where mean. I was. I knew where section 44 was, and I, I it basically was two rights from from where I turned in, wow. pulled over, and then they even had 
the stakes in the ground, the metal stakes where it said section yeah. 44. And so now I had it sort of narrowed down to, to where he was uh, in turn. And uh, I, I had to do a little bit of walking, not, not a lot. And I, I found him and um, he was between his parents and to give you a little, the backstory, he died in 63, yeah. uh, but he had no family, uh, yeah. immediate family. So they buried him between his parents and he didn't have a, a headstone to 1997. And oh. finally, a, a family friend said, we got to get this man uh, a so headstone. so interesting. Like he's such, yeah. a, such a giant in our hobby, in our legend, yeah. lore, and not just lore, but like real. And he, in like in the greater world, he, he dies really anonymously. It, it, it is. It's sad when you think about it, but yeah. it's true, you know, when yeah. you think about it. So the, the, the headstone didn't get there until 97, and it was just through the, the generosity of a family friend that said enough, so, you know, we're going to get yeah. this man a headstone. And it says right on his headstone, uh, you know, one of the great, you know, Jefferson Bird. It doesn't have a birth year. It just says March 1960, died March 1963, and it says one of the greatest uh card collectors uh in history yeah uh, and when i got there i found it and it it was a little trickier to find because over the years even even in the 26 years or, or you know it didn't appear like anyone did any sort of upkeep to no. it so it had lichen which is a form of algae i don't want i'm not a uh you know forestry major but <laughs> i know that much it had algae itself. It had a lot of dirt and grime. The the letters itself, which are carved into the stone, yeah. had filled with moss. Did you pressure so it wash was it? Uh, so I, yeah, so I, I, it was hard to read. Yeah. I had a a, a a thing of wet wipes in my car, like to wipe the steering wheel and that sort. So I went back and grabbed one of them, and just to see if I could make it a, a look a little bit better. That didn't do too much damage to, to cleaning it up. So I, I I had my conversation, and I got back in the car, and I, I went on my way and, and drove the 15 miles home. But on the way home, Rabbi David, it was on my mind. And all that Saturday, and, and thinking about this gentleman's yeah. contributions to the hobby, I'm like, we should be able to read read that headstone. And, and totally. so I never, I'm not going to lie, I've never cleaned a headstone uh, prior to this. But I also know, you know, if you use the wrong thing, you yeah. can you can do more damage than than good, and that's the worst thing I want. You know, uh, here, hey, here's the guy who defaced, <laughs> you know, Jefferson Burdick's headstone. Like, get him, right. you know. So I'm like, I gotta I gotta find out what I what I can and cannot do and use. So I researched it. Um, you know, D two is the preferred number one product, but the number. And that's just you got a special order. It's not crazy money, but it's not cheap. It's somewhere in between. I don't I don't have that. It's generally uh found with, with people who work with stone a lot sure. and that sort of thing. Um you could order, and I think I will eventually order it for future use, but at the time I didn't have it. But it said the next best thing I found out was a, a one-to-one mixture of dawn dish soap. Yeah, and clean cleaning vinegar, not the vinegar no. you would use in cleaning food, vinegar. But cleaning though, yeah. vinegar. It's pretty simple. And I knew that I, there's a dollar store near my house. I knew that they sold clean vinegar. I'd seen it there, and so I was all set to go out and buy it. My mother-in-law, who lives with me, said, "John, I have the Dawn, and the I use that to clean in in the house." Amazing. And she pointed me. She had like a spray bottle. In the in the kitchen against the the, the yeah, back. I'm counter. already mixed. It's already mixed. She right. goes, "Don't bother buying the cleaning vinegar. I made that solution you're talking about. It's all set for you. Just bring my bottle back." You know what I mean? <laughs> she says. Yeah. So I had that. I had a power sprayer that I've only had water in, so there's never been any chemical in, like a handheld, yeah, uh, like pump sprayer. Okay. So I had yeah. that, a soft pressure brush, and yeah. some toothpicks to to clean the lettering yeah. out and get the moss out. And I, I decided then I'm like, I got to go, but it, it was weighing on my mind. I'm like, I got to yeah. go back and do this. And I told my wife, I'm like, I'm thinking about doing this tomorrow. Just really bothering me. Like it's weird, but it's really like weighing. It's, cool. it's like a weight. It's I, yeah. I can't explain it. Yeah. And she goes, yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. I, you know, yeah. I said, I'm doing it. I'm getting up, I'm showering. I'm, I'm going cool. up there. And if I'm lucky, I'll be back for, 
for the NFL football, you know. So <laughs> so I went, you know, I got up, did my my stuff, loaded my car up with the, you know, the handheld sprayer and the chemicals and the toothpick and the brush. And I went up there, never done this before. And I just like I, I watch a YouTube video of a, of a gentleman kind of doing it. Yeah. Uh, wasn't rocket science. I'm like, okay, I, I got that. And it, uh, I did it. And, um, they, you know, you saw the before and after. Yeah. It was just the amazing little elbow grease. And then after I got done, you know, uh, you know, cleaning Jefferson Burdick's uh, headstone, you know, now you got his mom and dad, his, his, his dad to the left and his mom's. <laughs> and and they, were in sim- <laughs> they were in similar disrepair, if you will. And yeah, I'm like how can I how can I clean the sons and not right. leave the parents like that? It's sort of doing a disservice to everybody. And so cool. I'm like, hey, I got time. Um, let me let me take care of all three while I'm here. Cool. And so cool. I was there 70 minutes. Wow. And um, you know, it felt I didn't do it. You know, I did it because I just felt like it was the right thing to do, yeah. Rabbi David. Yeah, and I I posted it. Not so much to draw attention to myself. It's like I said in the article I wrote as well. I want this a lot of people in this hobby that honestly don't know who Jefferson Burdick yeah. is. And if it's yeah. a way to sort of draw attention uh to the man himself, then then that's all I can ask for. And even even sports collectors daily, uh, I know Rich Miller, he reached out to me, he's been on the show. He's like, John, I saw what you did. Can I use your pictures and run a story? It's cool. And I said, Rich, but by all means, you can under one condition, you know, make it more about Jefferson than uh, about me. Like you can, you, you know, you can mention I did yeah. it and I, yeah. I get it, yeah. but it's it's good. It's got to be about That's Jefferson right. Burdick. And I've gotten, uh, and I'll just close with this, and, yeah. and and we'll get to asking you some question. But you know, I got probably ten to fifteen uh, DMs or email now that uh, uh, that said. Hey, I didn't know Jefferson Burdick, John, but in reading what you did, it made me look into him oh, and the, the contributions he made. And and thank you for doing it. And he, he was very important to the hobby. Now I know. And that's that's cool. that's, that's the best part uh, of that's what I did. And cool. I also got I probably got 10, 10 or 15 emails on the other hand of people who knew who he was already and just said, Thank you for being able to do that. It's it's He's totally. it's well deserved on his part, but you know you didn't have to do that, and yet you did, and and no. so a thank you to to you. So it's cool, and you know it's not it's far. Cool. I'm in the area sometimes, so I'm going to make it a point um, to kind of be the steward, if you will. Yeah, uh, over that. I think it's sure super it's cool. Big. You know, it makes me think of that yeah. saying. Uh, you hear that saying? Um, a person dies two deaths. You know, once when they die, and a second time when they're forgotten. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you kind of keep them alive with that. It's super cool. It's, it's true. And and if I can educate people, you know, who want to learn about what he meant and, and his contributions through that, then that's a win. That's a win win as yeah. far as I'm. Um, I'm concerned. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, I, I yeah, mean, yeah. Thanks I, for sharing I, it. I, we might have to call this the Rabbi, the Rated Rabbi Show with, with <laughs> guest John. But no, I, I, I do. It's been taken, I, John. <laughs> And the best logo. I let's before I add, like we'll yeah. talk about that logo. I, it's it's yeah. one of the. It's obviously a play off of the the rated rookie, yeah. rated rookie from from Donruss. But when I yeah. saw that, and, and it's on my sticker board over here, and and I got that other one. Uh, I don't even want to put that on anything. It's it's such a, a great. You you sent Thank me a you. couple. Thankfully, Thank you. for um, sure. One of the best logos I, I'll say uh, in, in the hobby or, or podcast. Kind of talk yeah. to, even when you come up with yeah. the name for your pod, did that yeah. come right to you? Was there, did you have three or four choices? How did, yeah, it's how a did good you question. finally? Yeah. I, re- I remember uh, when I was kind of first back into the hobby and sort of finding my way and I'm still very much a student. Uh, yeah. We all are. We all yeah, are. for sure. I think that's what was part of the, the, the fun. Yeah. Um, kind of thinking what I wanted for an Instagram uh, handle. And I knew I didn't want my regular name and I knew I wanted it to be um, uh, more of a separated part from my life. I wanted it to be just hobby space. Um, yeah. But I also really uh, feel really blessed and fortunate to get to be a rabbi. I think it's a, just something that's really cool. 
very satisfying, very meaningful to me. It's super hard and super satisfying. Uh, and so I wanted to also, you know, embrace that part of me. And, uh, you know, I'm an eighties kid and, uh, you know, I, I never, I never knew John. I never knew that the first rated rookies, there's a six card. They're only on the back. 1983 Don Russ has six cards only. Uh, yeah. this is the 1993 Don Russ rated rookie. I never knew that till maybe a month ago. I think that the, the key card would be maybe Mel Hall. There's not a lot of stars. Yep. And then 84. Mel Hall is John. another local yeah. guy. He's from oh, Fort really? Byron, New York. Uh, so, so, so go ahead. No, but so then, I, you know, the, when the radio rookie, then there was that, that 84 was more of a banner that matches 84 Don Russ. And 85 is really when they kind of showed that logo. And that logo to me just became iconic. Uh, it so it's an 80s piece. And I love the alliteration. And, you know, also I think the last thing is I, I've learned that like the less I try, the less I force something, the more it comes. And I just was out for a walk with the dog and I just heard it and like, yep, rated rabbi. And then I wrote to a uh, young woman who was a congregant when I was in Atlanta uh, as a rabbi. And she's an artist, really terrific visual artist. I said, do you think you can take this rated rookie and play with it and turn it into rated rabbi? And she's, you know, basically hold my beer. 15 minutes later, she, you know, send it back a PNG of it and yeah, and that's that. Right. That's great. Thank history. you for asking. No, it's and I'm not just saying. I said that to you off the air. What I, when, yeah. <laughs> like I was, I, I'm like other than the rabbi part, which I can't uh, legally uh, say. I wanted this. I, I wanted the logo. Like, <laughs> like it's perfect. It it uh, just like it like you said. It's subtle, but it, it hits home. Thank you. It, it, and it, it you know obviously uh, as a rabbi, it's not false advertising. No, uh, it would be if I tried to do it. Uh, but uh, and and it, you know, it screams, it screams baseball cards. It's oh man, baseball. It, it, like you said, it bridges both your your worlds in a way, yeah, but together and and not too over the top either. It's not like egregious, man. it's just, it just, it works. And uh, you. I, you know, it's got my vote for uh, I like my logo too, but I Me mean, too. I really, really, I really Thanks, really love that, that it's, logo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when when you, you know, you went to the 1984 All Star Game in San Francisco, yeah. and when you started your podcast, it, you yeah. really used that to sort of as your foundation for your show, talking about everything pertaining yeah. to that yeah. game, not just yeah. not just the players, but even the, the the anthem and and commercials and and everything around the pop culture uh, yeah. surrounding that game. And you do yeah. that's not easy to do. Uh, nice. First off, uh, right off the bat, yeah. um, there's a skill to that. Like even if I, I've done podcasting five years or f almost five years, yeah. and if you said, "Hey, pick a sporting event that really means a lot to you, and then do a series of podcasts around it," uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it justice, and and definitely oh, not the justice uh, you did with with that game. Talk about yeah. did you know like from Jump Street like this is. This is what I'm going to at least start with. Like no, no. great, great thoughts and great questions. So I'll go back a little bit. So I, you know, I, I came back into the hobby like like so many people uh, uh, during COVID. Not the darkest part of COVID, but like more like January of uh, 2021. So not 2020, but I was like, you know, everyone was. It was just it was bubbling up, um, and you know, for me, it really became a moment of. I had been a just a, a husband and a father and a rabbi for so long. There had been no room for me. Like I had just been Dave with my own space in my life for, uh, I don't know, 17, 18 years. It's been a long time. And it just hit me. I, and, and so I came back to the hobby uh, for self-care, really quite, quite honestly. And when, you know, when you think about people who went back and it's worth digging into it, you know, people said, oh, they had all this time on their hands and they were at home. And. There's more to it than that. People were traumatized. People were stressed out at a super hard time. And and going back to our cards uh, made it a little bit easier, right? It helped. We felt better. And it just it gave us something to do. And and for me, I fell back in love with it on a level that it's just way. I, I thought I liked cards when I was a kid, but it's just it's way different. It's way deeper than it was when I was a kid because I'm an adult. Uh, and I, I started, I started listening to podcasts, listening to you, 
um who else mike baseball collector like all the hobby ogs mostly i'm a podcast guy when i walk the dog and i got so into listening to podcasts my dog got super skinny because i kept walking the dog. <laughs> <laughs> she, you can see her rear you're you're a personal trainer on like multi levels. Like, <laughs> hey, I'll I'll get you in shape and your dog too. Totally. So I would listen to you guys, and coming back in, I mean, I, I have some discretionary income, but I'm I and I had a few cards when I, I have a, when I was a kid. One I want to show you a little bit later, but all I had was a, a pretty you know a modest budget and all my old cards from when I was a kid. And a lot of them I kind of started selling on eBay and I built up a, a call my own war chest, like a dollar or five dollar, just very just deliberately and did. And then also like dude, people were buying anything in 21, 22. I have just like I was putting out, you know, off center 1979 Fran Tarkington, dollar 99 sold. So I just nickel by penny just built it up. But I could never and I saw really early I could never have um a collection like someone who, who's been doing it for 20 years or even t five years before the pandemic. It just where I came in is where I came in. Um, so I, I thought, well, you know what? I don't need to have the biggest collection, but I want to have an original collection. I want to have a collection that uh, like a fingerprint that's going to reflect me, that can be cool and different and interesting. And along the way, I can have some bigger cards, but I want to have a, a collection that only I can have. And it, it just it made it this made it so fun. And so I put together, first I put together an, an 80 card. I called it the, the master set. So a PSA graded, uh, the majority until PSA dropped their prices. I could, I found on eBay, mostly auctions. Um, then there'd be random ones like Dave Engel, catcher for the twins, one time all-star doesn't play in the game. He makes it doesn't get in. Ugh. So those are a little hard to find, but you know you can find an 85, uh, 84 um, Mattingly, real easy. Right? Tons of those graded. So I built it out. It was 60 players, 30 from each roster. It was the five announcers. Uh, it is the first pitch. It is the two guys throughout first pitch, Carl Hubble and Stu Miller. It's the honorary captains, Greenberg, Hank Greenberg for the AL and uh, Hubble for the NL. I'm like, okay, this is manageable. The Greenberg, the high, that's a little, you get a little pricey. And then bottom of the first inning, John, camera pans. And who is sitting there behind, kind of between home plate and first base? Who's sitting there? Blazer, sweater, just flowing, beautiful white hair. Joe DiMaggio, <laughs> right? Man? And all of a sudden, this master set got a little bit more pricey. <laughs> but uh, right, but, but I got, it was the last card. Can I show you the, the can I show you the? Yeah, 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 card? yeah, by all so, means. You know, it's but... not an un unknown card, but I just there you go. love this card. And I loved, um, I love the pursuit, right? I love the hunting of it. 48, 49. I listen to Dr. Beckett a lot. It's pretty much, this yeah. is probably a 49, right? But whatever. Uh, yeah, well, listen, I'm a Jackie guy, so I know it's right I, there. I yeah, I call it, it's the 1948 leaf, but there's a big debate as you touched on there, Rabbi David, of whether it's produced in in 49, yeah. 48. I'm gonna go with with Dr. Jim, who still says it's the 1948 leaf set. Now he'll tell you, you know, there there might be a few cards that were maybe produced in 1949, but yeah. that's how it's been. Uh, you know, it's always sort of been. The 48. Listen, what 48, 49, tomato, tomato. Totally. You got a Joe DiMaggio. Totally. I got a Jackie totally. Robinson. You can call whatever you want to call 48, totally. 49. We those cards totally. are still in our in our collections. Man. So, uh and 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 so but yeah, go ahead. Go so then ahead. No, just, so then uh, uh I started thinking about how fun it would be to do uh, a podcast. And the world already has one John Newman. The world already has one Mike Baseball. Club. <laughs> Dang, it's enough. <laughs> that is enough. But you know what I mean? So like for me, I wanted to do something that was was different. You know, something that's a bit different. And um, 1984 All-Star Game, July 10th, 1984. I'm 13 years old. My dad takes me, uh, my brother, and another buddy. And I, my, our seats, I am in dead center field. And Calstick was a football stadium, right? So it's way. Up dead center field. I'm in the last row, but man, I was in the stadium, 
walked yep. around a bunch. My dad took us early. My dad was always awesome, taking us to games at Candlestick. And he used to work in the city. We lived in Marin up in Novato, kind of about near Sonoma. He used to work in the city. He would drive all the way home to get us and then drive all the way back in, all the way across the city to Candlestick. So just a real special place and a real special time in my life. And all those players, I mean, it's it's Ricky, it's Reggie, it's Schmidt, it's young Samberg and Gwyn in their first All-Star games. It's it's um it's it's Gooden. Then and still today, the youngest to appear in an all-star game. I mean, can we can I jump over to one thing? Yeah, go ahead, I, go ahead. Yeah, so so you um you guys did a card mentions. I think it was a card mentions favorite 80s recently. Yeah, we, we just did that one. It was a really okay. good one. And and I know you couldn't Thank do you. them all, but I had just had to real quick uh, at least add one for me. 1980s must have the 85, 85 tops. Good, one. good yeah. one, man. I mean, well, you know what we're going to have to do, Rabbi Day? We're going to yeah. have to do a, 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 a sequel and have yeah. you on. All right. And have you I'm in. And, and you, you, you'll be like the. You'll correct our mistakes. Like, hey, guys, uh, you missed this. You missed this. You missed this. You missed this. And you missed this. How can you and I'll home? agree with you because that's – it's funny. when We don't script a lot with that show. That's one of the sort of uh, nuances. Yeah. We just kind of say, hey, let's let's talk about this. We don't share our list. That's why that's a lot cool. of times we have similar similar cards. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'll ask Danny. I'm like, well, how, how do we want to do five cards? Do we want to do ten? I don't want to just name the card. I want to like talk a little bit of back backstory. Why did I select this card? Or yeah. you know, the, and so he goes, Well, let's do five cards each in a sense that's 10 cards, although I got a feeling a few of those cards are gonna Griffey had to be on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it's funny when you're done with the show, you realize like, hey, and people in the chat room, because we do that live, we're like, hey, you missed this, or what about this? And you're like, Yeah, you know. Can't get um, it's one of those things, but we can do it. Uh, we can do another one and revisit. If we so do, good. I promise you this: as long as you come on, we'll, we'll have you on, and we'll, Love we'll make that. We'll make Love that a fifteen. To. We'll make that a fifteen card uh, uh, list, and oh, uh, we'll, see, we'll make sure you know we we'll we'll catch up on some of the ones that didn't make it on the. You know, it's like the Hall of Fame. Sometimes yeah. not everyone gets in first on ballot. the first ballot, but they they do get in. So totally. we'll have to. We'll have to revisit it, and that's right in your wheelhouse uh, oh, yeah. as well. So we'll, yeah. we'll be, uh, and and you can be our our guest mentor. We've had uh, we've had a couple: Jeremy Lee, Doctor Doctor Beckett, and uh, you really will be Jeremy Lee is too. But you'll be a, a real mentor. As, as well. It's awesome. <laughs> so so I, I'm gonna talk to Danny. And we're we're gonna cool. we're gonna get that. Uh, We'll get that on the uh, the docket, as you say. But nice. you do, you know, you took an event that's so special to you. Yeah. And not only did the collection, but the podcast too. And and the way you did it, you know, there's a million podcasts right now. You know that. I know yeah. that. And yeah. then, most of them are, are very good and everyone has a, a different style. But when you have that many of, of anything, right, it's, it's kind of been there, sort of done that. It's hard to do something and have someone say, wow, man, that's like completely something not done before. And I think you really did that Thanks, with, with your podcast. And, Thank and you. you know, Thank that's you. not easy to do. No. Uh, you know, you make it seem easier than it, than it is and seamless. But let's like mm -hmm. I said, if someone said, John, pick out a sporting event that's near and dear to your heart and do, you know, 30 episodes I'd be lucky if I get two or three and, and even the two or three I do will, will probably not be great. And, um, yeah. you know, the fact that you, you do it and, and do it where it's interesting. And I've listened to a, a probably Thank a good you. percentage of Thank them. Thank you. Thanks for listening. And, and you, yeah. And you, and you touch on a lot of the backstory. I mean, uh, here, here's like the camera pants to Joe D and like, I got to He's got it. Now he's in the, you're probably like, Hey, stop panning. Stop panning. This is costing me money. <laughs> even the fact that you did it in that fact, right? Somebody, yeah. would, you know, someone would just take the starting lineups Yeah. and say, okay, I'm going to do that. And that's it. And, but the detail you go into uh, and, and to the levels, you know, yeah. the, the anthem to commercials 
to who was caught on camera. That yeah. bad Taylor Swift wasn't around uh, yet. You know, <laughs> right. there'd be seventeen oh, other ways uh, for her. You'd have to get it's, seventeen. Uh, Taylor it's, Swift it's, cards. Su it's super fun. I mean, there's just. There's, it, it turns out 1984 is an incredible year uh, in sports and, and in pop culture. Yeah. Uh, 84 is the Olympics. 84, yeah. when the year starts, Thriller's number one album. Huey Lewis in the News, our number one when they do the anthem. But then Born in the USA we takes the over. Yes, do. Yeah, you, you caught deep, that. Yes, indeed. You deep, you deep dive this <laughs> on levels. like People wouldn't even know where to begin. And you like you didn't you knew where to begin and and where to go and, and yeah just amazing the, yeah. the attention to detail you know it's thank you thank you so much you know what it is there's a there's a way of of thinking it's a it's a it's Talmudic thinking and in the the Jewish uh, um, uh, li like the literature tradition all the the written text all the interpretations not just of the original uh, biblical text but all the thousands of years of rabbinical interpretation. Uh, particularly the Talmud, which kind of comes out mid first millennium. And it's, it's the, if the, if the Torah and the Bible say the, what the Talmud kind of explains how, what it's trying to yeah. teach. And it's all about free association. So you could be talking about this over here, which just leads to this other digression over there and then over there and then back to there. So kind of, a, I think I'm sort of wired to think that way. Just free associate yeah. and trust that I'm going in the right direction. Um, and it's just super fun to, to thin slice something. Like you're not listening to the podcast to find out who won the 84 All-Star game, right? It doesn't it's, matter anymore. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But but to um like for example, one of my favorite, you know, do you ever do an episode that you love and no one else watches it or listens well, to? Well, it's it? funny. I'll give you just a, a real clip. Yeah. It's not my most downloaded, although it's sort of making sort of a late charge. It's not recent. It was a couple of years ago. You know, growing up in Brooklyn, my dad lived in, in Ebbets Field. Yeah. And like, you know, I never had my dad on. Like, he's not a pod, you know. Um, he, he has cards, but he's not active, let's say. And what I'm thinking, you know, you know, a lot of people from that era, unfortunately, are, are no longer with us. And here my dad still is. And I'm like, Gordon. How how many opportunities you're gonna have to have someone on the show who can tell you what it was like to meet Jackie Robinson and Duke Schneider and Campanella and Car yeah and and meet them up close and personal and what Ebbets Field was like and what baseball was like in not just Brooklyn but in 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 all the boroughs yeah. of New York yeah and I'm like I I have I know a guy it's my dad I know a guy right? totally right and you know at, at first I was like. I know this is going to sound weird probably to you, Rabbit. I'm like, that's my dad, though. I don't, I don't, you know, people say, oh, he's got a dad, putting a dad on the show, you know. But I'm like, he he's the perfect guy for an episode like this. I he, He's yeah. been on the show twice, but the first one was called The Brooklyn Experience with Barry okay. Newman. Nice. And he got, I mean, there was times if you look, he got choked up a few times and he brought him back to, his childhood in it. I think it got choked up in, in ways we probably would too. If we thought, you know, it really dawned on him. Like he can never go back only Oof. in his mind. You know what wow. I mean? Like, yeah. uh, and being at the time, 82, he's 84. Now he's like, wow. on, you know, and the Dodgers left and he talked about the Man. impact he talked about. Did he stay with the Dodgers. Day. Um, he, he did, but I, I, I think he didn't follow him in the same way he did yeah. as, as Brooklyn Dodgers. He did, no. you know, I think the last time he really followed the Dodgers, Rabbi David, truthfully, was the Steve Garvey era, Ron, oh, Sand, yeah, Fernando, probably around uh, the 80s. And I'm yeah. not saying he, he didn't watch baseball, but he wasn't his finger wasn't uh, on the pulse in the same way it, it used to be, yeah, and but um. You know, hearing them tell those stories and reminiscing and getting choked up at, at different points. And he ever talked about the day Babe Ruth passed away and how wow. there wasn't a dry eye. He, he, he remembers coming out onto the street and people were crying on the wow. street, even though you knew like it was, you know, it, it was people knew he was sick and that day would eventually come when it actually does. And I, and he said, like, it didn't matter whether you were a Yankee fan, a no. New York Giant fan or a Brooklyn Dodgers. This was the 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 guy this was the, 
the mecca of 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 uh, an icon of the sport, and yeah. it didn't matter whether you were not a Yankee fan when he passed away. It hurt you, and uh, yeah. you know those wow. stories you just can't get from anybody. You have, and I'll, I'll make the story so. That show wasn't necessarily my most downloaded, but it got the most feedback. So I had, okay. and I've talked about this on the show and other people. I, I had people who say, you know, John, um, I had a, a falling out with my father and hearing you and your dad oh, wow. on, on your podcast. Uh, and even though I think my dad was wrong, uh, I picked up the phone and said, this is stupid. Let's, you got it. let's, you know, let's uh, bury the hatchet, so to speak. And I got about mm -hmm. three of those emails or dms and one wow one was a one was a, a guy that was uh, a couple years he hadn't talked to his dad and it was almost like different uh, one was like two years estranged one was five and one guy no. that's the one that really sticks out was double digit years he said it's been wow over 10 years uh he even said i, I my dad i like i think my dad was uh, like i'm not changing my mind on who i think was right or wrong but I'm realizing, like, my dad's not – and hearing you talk to your dad who's 84, like, someday my dad's not going to be here. Good and, for you. And wow. Is being, him. is being right is being right worth more than, than not having a, some sort of relationship at the end with my dad? He goes, listening to you talk to your dad about all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it really, uh, it really opened my eyes, and I'm, I'm calling him this afternoon. I hadn't called oh, him. Oh, wow. Yet. All right. It's like – and he then he emailed me back and said, "Hey, we 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 talked for a couple hours on the phone, and we're gonna we're gonna get together." And when I did that episode, I, I'll be fully transparent. I had no that wasn't the goal or the intention. I, I just wanted my dad to come on and talk yeah. about the Brooklyn Dodgers and Evans Field and what the players yeah. were like. And um, and it to you know, and I I showed my dad some of those messages, and it, my dad's a very sensitive man and that he got yeah. emotional like reading that and uh, wow, to think that something he was part of and it's funny even before those messages came in when we were done recording he's like i know i tried to like i got choked up a couple times but that was just so much fun look can we do another oh. one he wanted to do oh. like he wanted to do another one like right away it's so and awesome. I'm like cops what you know let's not <laughs> overdo a good thing let's see how this uh, comes out and every time i'd see him you know, a lot of times I'll go to dinner. He goes to my sister's, and so I'll go to my sister's, and we'll eat dinner. And and you know, every time I was there, you want to do another show? You know, he got. Like, and I'm like, well, I'll pick a time. And so he was on two episodes. That's cool. Um, he was on another one when Duke Schneider finally, not Duke Schneider, when um, oh, it's escaping me. Oh, Gil Hodges. Gil, Gil Hodges. Hodges died. Gil yeah. Hodges finally got in the hall for. Oh, got in the hall. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, I, I this is the reason to bring my dad back. Yeah, and talk about Gil Hodges and why he thought maybe it took so long, or should he been in? And so we did yeah. like a Gil Hodges sort of retrospective, and and that's so, cool. But you know, I didn't want to. I don't want to do a, an episode just for the sake of doing it either. You know right. what I mean? Like, right, right. Uh, I could have my dad on every week, and he'd probably do it. Uh, but you know, I, I think when you do them for the right reasons, they they have more. Uh, yeah. uh, of an impact, and, oh, yeah. and so when you ask that question, that uh, that uh, is is the two, uh, and not just because it was my dad, just because that went from like a hobby episode to like a whole different direction. And yeah. one, frankly, Rabbi David, I had no idea that's what was going to occur. Like it, it was just cool. a, a complete shock, and and you know, it just to think that you do a hobby podcast and maybe have sort of that kind of impact comes from it. I would have never, you know, I would have oh, never yeah. guessed to that level. Well, so yeah, yeah, that, that, that is, a, and I find the more I like, kind of bring it up, it's starting yeah. more people are starting to go back and, and download it and that sort yeah. of thing. And uh, I mean, I, that's not why I talk about it, but uh, it's just yeah. sort of a, a fringe, a fringe benefit uh, uh, of it. And, um, you know, so uh, it, it's those experiences, right? Not everyone can share those is, a lot of those folks are unfortunately uh, no longer with us. And yeah. uh, I think it's important to, you know, and that's something even, you know, God forbid when, when my, my dad's uh, not here, you know, and hopefully that's later than sooner, 
we can, you know, look back at those episodes and 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 I'll probably rerun, you know, I'll, I'll pick a time yeah. when they maybe we re re air them and sort of remix them and you know uh, go it's back cool. to them and 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 that sort of thing. But uh, again, with what you've done with your podcast and and connecting all those dots, again, you make it look easy, um, but it's it, it's not. Yeah. And, um, you know, and and you. you know, you say something on your show too that I think is very important. I wanted to to talk about. You know, again, it's not necessarily. You know, it's nice to have a, an expensive card, and I have those, and I have dollar cards that I love too. And yeah. that's that's a message that comes out of your uh, broadcasting that I think is important. That uh, you know, there's sentimental ways to collect, and and I think you yeah. you you personify that. With uh, yeah. the '84 uh, set that the master set you put together, um, and 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 everything that you you know whatever something you enjoy it doesn't have to be yeah. dollar signs. It can be no. like take you back to a moment in time that you you love. Whether you know for whether sure. a, a, or you know for you it's the '84 All Star Game, uh, and a great point with Gwyn and, and Sandberg Young. You oh know, man! Future superstars and, and they're balling. Players. By the way, they're fully formed yeah. in that game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. you saw them in their earliest, in their first All Star game. As yeah, you said. first All Star game. It's just so many tentacles. There's yeah. just so many tentacles. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think we, we. Yeah, I think <laughs> sometimes you lose when you're at a sporting event or any event. It doesn't even have to be yeah. a sporting event. Just some sort of significant event. You, I think sometimes we lose the fact of of so many undercurrents and things going on here so much um, going on and so and you much. did a great job with between the collection and the podcast itself to to Thank kind you. of bring that all out and then kind of it, it all comes together like for uh like the finale right and yeah it's, it's still not it's done the story no i i uh, never you can always add on to it it's, it's one of those the story yeah. never has to necessarily end no. until you want it to for sure i uh the first one I started doing it, I was doing it twice a week, which was which tons of fun. I love doing it, but I really like, you know, the definition of a hobby, right, is an activity done regularly in one's leisure time for pleasure. So it has to hit, yeah. has to hit the leisure time and pleasure, right? The last thing I want this to be in my life is is work, right? I really yeah. want it to be fun. I love to like lose myself in it, but when I started to feel like I finish an episode and I have to do another one. And like, I don't know that I want, I don't know. I, it was much, so much fun as it was. It was just, it was too much. So now I'm just doing once a week on Monday as I started that maybe six, eight weeks ago. Um, maybe, yeah, say six weeks ago. Uh, and I'm, I'm about to get to episode 40 and I'm starting the top of the fourth. So I don't know how long <laughs> it's going to go. I'm in the top of the top of the fourth. Uh, I definitely have enough material because the starters are now starting to come out. So every time yeah. a new guy comes in, there's just a universe I can do. So someone said, why don't you do 84? Kind of be the perfect number. And maybe I'll stop there. I got a lot of stuff yeah. ahead. I got to show you a great card really quick that has to do with yeah, the yeah. It just came yeah, today. Ahead. So uh, there's an incredible, incredible string coming up. Fourth and fifth inning, the AL batting in the top of the fourth and fifth. You're going to have uh, Fernando coming out for the second inning and Gooden making his first all-star appearance, taking the mound for his first inning. So they're going to consecutively strike out six players in a row. Fernando is going to strike out in the top of the fourth, three consecutive Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famers. He gets, uh, who's he get? First, he gets Winfield, who's hitting 370 at the break. Remember that year? And then you get, uh, then you get uh, Reggie in his final all-star game. And then you get George Brett, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, and Fernando just breaking off screwballs. Are and Brett, Brett's not a guy that strikes out a lot. No, like, no, Brett was the closest to being on him, but he, he came too on a actually a called third. Uh, so the card I got in the mail today, 2015 Tops, uh, a stadium club, right? And for people listening to the pod, it is the picture that inspired the song by Lords uh, Royals. You know this story? No, I, I know the song. I didn't know yeah. it was inspired by. Yeah, the, never the be royal. So the deal is, she's from New Zealand. 
she she actually breaks. She's huge by the time she's 18. She writes the song when she's 13 or 14 years old, hanging out with a friend, flipping through an old National Geographic magazine. There's pictures taken of George Brett spring training in 1976. She's from New Zealand, knows nothing about baseball, knows no idea who this is. She's this young, handsome guy surrounded by people holding out baseballs, looking up and smiling, and she's inspired. That's The title comes from his jersey, Royals. So like I get to do a dive into that in the next episode. And, you know, it's just me being a nerd in the, in the basement by myself. And, I, and I've heard that song. Yeah. I assumed yeah. she was talking about like a monarchy, whether it be the British or yeah. in other countries, royals. You know, who knew yeah. she was talking about George. Yeah. Brett. There's some lyrics break- in there, but the title of the song is comes from that photo. Yeah, you're going to break some news. You're going to be like the Dan Rather of uh, Happy Broadcast in there. Like, That's hey, right. just when you thought that, uh, you know, Lord song was about like monarchy and, and royals on that level. No, it's, it was George Brett. <laughs> it's true. So it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot, a lot of fun for me. Um, I've been thinking about how I might uh, start bringing on a, a guest or two and how I might do it in a fun, interesting way. And the thing I've been playing with is an idea called season team boombox screen. So it would be have a guest on. Uh, he or she would talk about uh, a season and a particular team. So you might do 1988 Mets, right? Not the 86 team, right? I, that's already reserved. Ooh, so that's, that's a you might do 88, too, right? right? 88 Mets, 100 games. And then, then the boombox screen is either something from music or a TV, a movie, or a commercial. So like 88 Mets, and you thin slice like just a couple of stories, a couple of memories from that team, and then take something from pop culture like um, Bull Durham is 1988, right? And just might have some fun with that. And I thought it might be yeah. fun to start having guests and mixing it up a little bit. That's as far as I've gotten with the idea, but I'm going to I'm gonna hit you up if you oh, do it. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I kind of know what direction, like, I'll, you know, it's your show, but uh, I, I, you know, one thing I have uh, is I have a good memory with things that are like from the, you know, different points in your life that mean yeah. a lot to you. And sports for me is, is huge. Yeah. Pop culture is another yeah. thing uh, that's uh, big, uh, big with me. And so, uh, yeah, anytime you, anytime you want. And again, there's a show, right? I just hope no one hears this and like steals your thunder here. Man. I'm not gonna, but I just no, hope no one right. else. And if we, if it. they do, listen, we know where you got the idea <laughs> here from, and we're we're coming it's after right. you. So right. They would do it their I'm, way. I do it mine. It's all good. <laughs> I, I got to ask you, yeah. Rabbi David. You know, I spoke to you a little bit before we hit uh, record, but yeah. not the normal trajectory, right? You've you've wore a few different hats before. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, becoming a, a rabbi. Uh, New York City bartender, yep. uh, personal trainer, kind of talk about the the trajectory uh, of that. Yeah. I mean, uh, I maybe that's how it should be. Like to become a rabbi, you have to do uh, yeah. you have to do a year or two behind yeah. the bar in, in New yeah. York or, or yeah. another big city, yeah. and then personal trainer. It's sort of like the right of a passage if, if you yeah, if you will. absolutely. But I kid, I kid, obviously. No, but no, for no. you, talk about you know, how that all came about. Cause it, it's yeah. definitely interesting to say the very least. Thanks. Um, it's always someone who, who uh, wanted to live a meaningful life, which I think all of us want, right. The normal thing. And uh, wanted to do something cool and significant, make a positive difference in the world. I think a lot of us feel that way. And, uh, and our planet is better for it. Right. I think people are gen- generally quite good. Uh, capable of, of wonderful. Uh, and I was always okay in school, but didn't have a lot of you know, interest. I never lacked aptitude and I could write and speak. So I could kind of make my way through liberal arts education went to UC Davis. I'm from San Francisco in the Bay Area um, and just didn't exactly know what I wanted to do. And it seems I've noticed over the years is kind of like, to, if you want to just break people who become, I can't speak to other clergy, but I imagine there must be similarities in all religions. Uh, I just, I've noticed it's kind of like two categories of rabbis. Uh, one category is 
they either, yep, this is what I want to do with my life, or it was just right, they were adjacent to it. It was real close. Like they were almost there the whole time. And, and then there's you know, people like me. And people who are like, really? A, a, a rabbi? Like, we know you're Jewish, but are you like, that Jewish? You know, like, whoa, go professional. So, so, uh, <laughs> But it just it just made sense over the years. And so I, I, I kind of, you know, traveled a lot and explored uh, kind of the, the outer and inner world of life and tried to find my way and led me to New York, which that was when I bartended and, and um, ended up back in San Francisco, which is where I'm, where I'm from. And uh, an ex-girlfriend and I started a personal training business and that was good. Um, but I just kind of felt like that was something something deeper. For me, something like a next next level to to reach for, uh, and honestly, I grew up with a, um, a strong cultural identity uh, as a Jewish person, but not I wasn't particularly religious in my family. Always a spiritual seeker, um, and then went to Israel in 2000. I'm like, oh, this this these are the words, these are the language, this is the way, this is this is the peace falling into place, and. Um, and this, you know, came back, this would have been kind of fall or early 2021 and spoke it into being for the first time and I had to start from scratch, you know, and, and it was a lot of years of sacrifice. Thank God I have an amazing wife. I, I, when I got clear on becoming a rabbi, she and I were, had been friends and actually went to the kind of the next level as a couple, uh, not, not long after I, I got clear on my path and she's been there since the beginning, right? Like a, a good woman by your side is, she's amazing. And um, long story short, it was a long road from the time I first realized I wanted to, to do this with my life. The time I was ordained and officially became a rabbi was 12 and a half years. A lot of, a lot of twists and turns and ups and downs. And uh, finally became ordained in um, uh, June 20th, 13, 2013. Was in Atlanta for five years and then have been now in Alexandria, Virginia, where I hope to stay. I hope they get to carry me out of here. Uh, been there, been here now for five plus years. Um, and it's, uh, it's a really cool life. Like I said, it's, it's a really challenging path to have in life to be, uh, you know, to, to serve the people. Um, but it's, it's really, really rewarding to, to make a positive difference in the world and, you know, good times and bad and just to be all in. Well, it comes out to, uh, you know, it comes out, Rabbi David, even in your podcast, which is obviously a hobby one. I think your your spirituality comes out, uh, you know, whether it's intentional or just natural, it mm -hmm. comes out in, in your podcasting as well. And uh, I think that's important. I don't think like that's not a bad thing. I, no. I think that's a no. I think that's a good, you know, I tell even I'm obviously not a rabbi or a pastor or anything along those lines, but I, too, am a person of faith and mm -hmm. and. You know, I will share some personal stories on the show. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've had a lot of people say, hey, I appreciate that. It it, it makes you, yeah. it brings that human element side. That, hey, there's, you know, yeah, there's yeah. people behind the cards, right? I mean, the, yeah. the cards is all what we enjoy. Yeah. But without us too, without without the people who enjoy the cards, there wouldn't be a hobby. Hence the, the tagline hobby of the show, which people, is man. below us on the screen, right? Totally. And it is about the cards, Absolutely. but it's about the people and the stories too. And so yeah. I'll always, you know, I've, I've, I lost my brother during the show run, my stepbrother. Yeah. Um, I've lost pets and I've, I've, you know, I don't drone on about it, but I share like, Hey, this is going yeah. uh, in my life. And just so you, you know, maybe I sound a little bit different today and, and whatever the case um, I think it's cool. I think people, I, I do think it's, 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 I think to open you, so I think it's even a little therapeutic too for, yeah. for at least when I've shared it too, to sort of get that out there and, and talk about it. And it sort of yeah. makes you feel good. And, um, you know, I, that comes out in, in your broadcasting Thank you. uh, as well. And I think it's, I think it's important and, uh, you know, to bridge both those words, like even the name, right? Rated Rabbi. But, yeah. you know, I, I think it's important. And uh, have you had, uh, has the show led to anyone maybe, not necessarily this is the goal, but has maybe someone reaching out with with something on their mind or, or a way? Yeah. And like, hey, I, I know you're busy, but, you know, sort Never of that. Never too busy. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, people. What will happen is people will just. Uh, it gives people the invitation just to be real with me from the beginning. Yeah. You yeah. know, and uh, be genuine, and right away we can we can connect. Um, I I agree with you. I when this is actually one of the first things that really appealed to to listening to your pod is oh yeah the hobby is the people, right? It's at some point you have to look at the the cardboard as just a metaphor, right? Yeah. It's a metaphor for our relationships with others, our relationships with with ourselves. You know, one of my favorite things is is I you know I believe that in the that in the end what we collect is ourselves. Right, like I think we can tell a lot about people by. Yeah, I've heard you say. Card. I yeah. heard you. I heard you say that it makes, it makes sense. I've heard you use the term like our collections are our fingerprint because no yeah. two collections will be alike. There, there, there's no yeah. way unless you yeah. literally tried to do that intentionally, and even then, yeah. someone's gonna veer off and hey, I got this card instead. Totally. You know? And I think so we saw. Are I think we saw that. I think we saw people bu buying what people told them to buy and it not turning out well. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. generally, I think it, it, it can lead to unhappiness. If you yeah. sort of, Hey, do this, follow, you know, listen to what, buy this, don't buy that, collect this, don't collect that. Right. And in a sense, it's not like it's, I've asked people for, Hey, what do you think here? Sure. But ultimately the decision uh, is, is mine at the sure. end of the day. Totally. Right? And that's the way. Totally. That's the way it should be, and that's why totally. uh, you know I heard you use those two terms, right? That it's a yeah. a fingerprint, and it's you're collecting yourself, and uh, yeah. uh, truer words uh, I don't think can be can be spoken because, and I've never heard them. Um, you know, I've used I've used the line "hobby your way," sort yeah, of the play like off of, yeah. off of Burger King, and I didn't really <laughs> think of Burger King when I said that. I just came up with it, but uh, I, I guess you could put the the two together, yeah. but. Absolutely. But it's it, it's true. Like uh, no co two collections are going to be exactly the same, and there are fingerprints uh, of yeah. our collection. And uh, yeah. it's a great way to look at it. And appre I think we appreciate it more when we look at it. Like, hey, I oh, built yeah. this. I, you know, when totally. you look at those, when you look at that '84 uh, All Star Game Master Set, right? Who, yeah, who has that, right? <laughs> uh, even if even if totally. someone has some of the cards, right? Who yeah. has that exact? Uh, the, yeah. the same cards in the way that you you did it, and uh, totally. I think that's important. I think you, Thank you you appreciate the journey to get your collection. You know, I, I talk about that. Yeah, it's like even even with the Jackie that I acquired, we're going to talk about one you recently acquired. Yeah, it was the even the journey, like getting the card was an adrenaline rush, and and but even everything leading up to that moment, right. Is, is part of the story. Oh, um, totally. With the pinnacle being the, the acquisition. And I think I always tell people don't lose sight. Like, don't forget that part. Cause it's totally. sort of, even if you have to write down almost like a journal, I know it sounds kind of totally. silly, no. but uh, even if you have to write it down to remember uh, certain details and how it, how it occurred. I think it's really you important. Recently, yeah, I, I want to highlight, you know, I've spoken yeah. uh, at nauseum for Jack, Jack. It's over my shoulder. It's good enough uh, to say. But you recently yeah. acquired a big card in, uh, in your own right. I'll let you. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming it's probably nearby. I, 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 got, I, got, a, I got a bunch of cards here to talk. Whatever we, <laughs> wherever we go, I'm ready I, for you. Man. Yeah, I, I, you know the one I'm talking about, the 52. Yes. It, it, yeah. yeah. yeah so I, uh, I recently um, uh, acquired a 52 Tops Maze. I'm going to show in a second. And, um, you know, I was thinking about when you were talking how important it is. You talk about making notes of the journey to acquire a card and along the same lines, just taking the time to um, look at our cards is like as a huge part of collecting. And I feel like when we, when we you know, hit that buy it now or win that auction eBay and, and the, we have that moment and then we have the mail day moment. Um, but and so for a moment we're we're fulfilled, but we're collectors and we're always kind of we're like swimming sharks, thinking about it, thinking about it, making move, just going and going and going. And I find that when I pay attention and I appreciate my cards, I um, I buy far fewer what I call marshmallow cards. You know that 
that's that is like a test so that you get little kindergartners like okay you can have one marshmallow here but if you wait an hour you can have two right and it's like a yeah yeah I've right? Seen that. I've, right I've so seen like a marshmallow that, yeah. card is like you know buying that you know 1965 slightly off center psa four willie mays like why am i doing this you know that's a marshmallow card and you know you know it's a marshmallow card by how fast you put it away yep right if you're just kind of scratching some itch uh it's the opposite of a marshmallow card to me is uh what i call a nightstand card right and I yep. call it a nice scan card when you, because when you get that card, man, you take it out of the box, you carry it around with you, do the dishes, have it propped up, table, and then the last thing put you it do, under, put it under oh, your pillow at night time. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I, uh, you know, kiss my wife goodnight, and then take one more look at the card. A hundred percent, you know. And um, so, so I have a few, just a small handful of of nightstand cards, and the the one. That we're talking about is uh, this 1952 maze in a PSA two. It's a a PWCC E, so top fifteen percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know that I I need them to tell me right uh, what a good looking car, especially this card. Man, I looked for this card for a year. You know what it's like, right? You're just looking for your copy yeah. and looking and looking and looking and looking, and I just started to feel like. Either I was going to buy one that was unattractive, right? John, if I'm showing you my cards, I want to be fired up to show them to you. And I want you to be yeah. super stoked to see them. I don't like, oh, that's nice. Like, I want you to really like, oh, awesome. <laughs> right? You know how it is. You're fired up to yeah. show somebody. So, and I just, at, I came to a place where I'm like, either I'm going to have to buy an ugly one, which I don't want, or I'm going to have to spend more than I really am uncomfortable with. And, and yeah. I realized that what I was pricing it at I just, I didn't want it that bad, right? For what I was looking at, I could have had, so you have a nice little th rush more over your shoulder. Like I could have gotten an Aaron and a Kofax rookie, nice ones for the price of the 50. So I just kind of said, you know what? I've got the 51, I'm happy. And I, I surrendered, right? Like didn't give up, but I gave over. I took my oar out of the water and said, you know what? I give up. I went to national and had a had a weird national time. I was much more introverted than I expected to be. It was almost like a, I was going through this process of kind of like um, reflecting and clarifying and discerning what I wanted my my collection to look like and my hobby experience to look like. And I didn't actually spend. I bought a couple of little tiny things. Um, mostly, I just like spent time thinking and looking and realized like actively I I didn't want almost everything there, which was for me very clarifying. Help me figure out what it is I do want. But the maze is, I mean, I understand. Everyone's got to make their nut at national. I don't begrudge anybody. But they just were like, they were priced at a place it's where I couldn't true. even start a conversation. I didn't it's want to true. insult anybody. And I, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. So It's funny because not yeah. to, just real quick, I yeah, mean, yeah. I even went to this year's national yeah. with a goal of a, a Seaver rookie or Clemente rookie. I didn't oh. wind up getting either one. Yeah. Uh, just because for exactly what you – you yeah. said like yeah. the price is like I like you 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 worded it perfectly like I understand there's going to totally. be a little sticker shock it's a national people got travel hotel yeah. expensive yeah. but the sticker shock was way too much for me to justify making yeah. a purchase there now yeah. I bought stuff there I don't want to make yeah. it like oh, I'm not you buying a nothing didn't you and, uh, didn't you guys both pick yeah, K lines they, together they, yeah we we bought uh, uh K line brother cards uh and uh, we both so cool. K -line together yeah. and, and the story and the story that go because the year yeah. before uh, i don't know if you had this we both were we're looking for Kofax rookies mm -hmm. and we i found one at the last day literally at like the final hour i was getting oh my ready, gosh getting ready to leave the show i was born gonna come come back home the the next day no yep. and i found it and i showed danny i'm like i got it and he's like did you get it from that table over there in that section I'm like, yeah, how'd you know that? He goes, I was coming back to get that. You know? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's cool. So we, we have a funny story there. He wound up as a happy ending. He has he has his own Kofax that he got yeah. on on his own accord. But uh, so he, we, cool. we, we, we call that the stolen Kofax because I, so, I did it so cool. before. But, yeah, so but there really, again, the stories, yeah. right? 
But yeah. go ahead, go back. Like, okay, so this one, this I kind of took my hands off the wheel and um, felt fine about it. Uh, and but it, it just wouldn't go away. It was still there. Yeah. Right, it was kind of huh, still talking to me, like I'd get quiet and I'd hear it whispering. And then this one popped on PWCC, and I, uh, uh, Matt, 1956 Top Sky is uh, yep. you know, buddy from the hobby, a buddy on IG, and I took a screenshot, sent it to him. What do you think? And you know, there's just some really, it's just there's just good camaraderie in the hobby. What do you think? Yep. And love the example. We kind of tried to ballpark the price. Um, and it and I so I got Sunday morning right I threw in a bid and I said you know what this is what I can spend I'm not going to think twice about it. I'm not going to watch the countdown went to bed yeah. never looked woke up the next morning congratulations you yeah, won I heard you yeah, yeah it was really cool and I don't it was I meant to be it was meant to be meant meant to be and I just want a really I want a, a really small beautiful collection one that when it comes time either to sell off or or to pass on like. These are the ones that hold, they're, they're all, they all have value to me, but these are the ones that have financial worth, just a small collection and the rest, you know, maybe yeah. less than 10% of the financial investment on those. I don't, I don't buy any of these cards as investments. So to me, it's, 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 it's a hobby and it's fun. And if, if there are stores of, of um, value and if they're a hedge against inflation over time, great, but I, I don't I don't feel like I um I wouldn't feel good telling my my wife I have I have my retirement in cardboard. Just, well it's uh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> just, well, know, it's funny. So I have you know, I did my first show as a as a fifteen year old uh, kid and wow. you know, so I had a, a business account very early, like a like okay. a bank account and when I was engaged to my wife my wife said to me, John, what are you doing with your business account? And I said, and I I apologize to anyone who's heard me talk about this on the show, but, uh, you know, I said, uh, what do you mean? What am I doing with that business account? And she goes, well, you know, like marriage is a partnership. And I'm like, yeah, but we're not partners in the card side of things. Like, you don't, <laughs> you know, I didn't mean it like as no, harshly no. as I can. You know, she goes, well, I think she was fearful Rabbi David, that it was like sort of an escape pad. Like, hey, if this gotcha. doesn't work out, I'm I'm taking this account and pulling the pulling the parachute cord and getting yeah, jumping yeah. out of the plane, yeah, which was yeah. never obviously. And so I said to her, I said, I'm I've had it since I'm 15 years old. Basically, it's the same account. I just you know I switch banks depending yep. on on moving and that sort of thing. But other than that, it's it's the same account. I said, you don't realize it today, but you're going to be thankful about that account later later on and she cool. didn't really know you know she said okay you know but i don't think she really grasped the, the concept so when i bought the jackie rookie yeah you know when it came she actually signed for it i was in dallas at the card show and mm -hmm. i was hoping it would come before i got i went to dallas it, it didn't work out right that way so uh, i tell the story my wife actually took a, a, a personal day to stay home. So she was home to sign for it. Of course she um, did. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. So she, I, I remember she texted me the box. She didn't open the box. Okay. She goes, Hey, here's my, you know, she joked, here's my retirement or whatever. <laughs> and I joke, you know, I texted her back. You wouldn't know how to sell that if you, had, if you, <laughs> if you had to. And she texted back. I, you're right. But Jordan does. That's my, my 20 you know and she had a while you know I was, it's gonna be a girl's a girl's only vacation in this oh, box no. you know she was she was kidding so i i you know now i can't wait to get home it's it's yeah you know and open it i got home it was like 12 midnight i filmed it put oh. it on on youtube i i'm like i'm dead tired but i'm not going to bed it's no bad. way wait so <laughs> i filmed it so the next day, I showed her the card. I'm like, "This is a Jackie rookie." And she goes, "Can I can I ask you what you paid for it?" I'm like, oh, "Yeah, I'll tell you." And I told her, and, you know, she yeah. went. And I'm like, "Now are you glad I have that that business account because that money didn't totally. come out of the joint account; it came nope. out of the the card side." And now I said, "Now you knew." what I was talking about 20 years ago when I said, so cool. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. The business got staying separate because yeah. none of anything I do with cards, Rabbi David all comes yeah. from 
that account. She'll never like say, right. hey, what was this purchase same. for such and such, you know? Same, and same. so she appreciate she didn't appreciate the sentiment then because she didn't understand it, but she definitely definitely grasped the concept. Super cool. Uh, you, you know Super now. Cool. But like you said, I think it's important to know, you know, it's the night I, and I love that the that terminology, right? Nightstand cards and yeah. and marshmallow cards. And and it's true. And and it, it doesn't have to be based on value or what no. something costs you right No. again something might cost you a little bit more but it's still it's the meaning it's not hey i yeah. paid this for it that's why the, the, you never hear me say the jackie's special because it costs this it's just no. the same way you'll never say hey the 52 mays is special to me because it cost i would no. rather have paid a lot less to tell yeah you. Sure, the, for so sure. I don't take yeah. any pride in. No, hey, no, I paid no this one. <laughs> no. You know, like I would have rather got it for yeah. less. And truthfully, it's my own fault. I talked about the one of my regrets is just not buying it numerous times before when yeah. it was a lot cheaper. Yeah. Uh, and I kicked that can down the road and like a dummy that I was at the time, and it just cost me more in the end. And it's just yeah. it was almost kind of what you were saying, like. I had to make a decision, like, I'm going to either get it now or it may never have. Like, it's yeah. not really going to necessarily get cheaper. So if you're waiting for that Walmart, we've dropped our prices, uh, That's that doesn't that happen. Hard. With certain, yeah. So it's no. like, John, you're either going to get it now or you really got to, like, put it to rest that you're yeah. just not going to own that uh, car. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's okay, too. There, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's there's worse things, obviously, yeah. uh, in life. But uh I just decided it's 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 time, and it's my own fault for it costing more because there was I can I can think of three specific occasions where I had an opportunity to purchase that car and just said ah, I'll get it another time. And you got uh, it, you got you it. Know, there. All it, right, so it, it, uh, so I have a question for you. So sure. when I I texted you, we we are both Billy Joel fans. Huge, huge. And because uh, yeah. you talked about having a Billy Joel, a non sport card recently. I'm like, oh, we're both yeah. Billy Joel fans. Okay. So, and I texted you and I said, which, which Jackie Robinson card is Piano Man? And you wrote me right back. Remember what you said? Uh, it's got to be the 48 yeah. Leaf, right? It's yep, the right one. Away. Yep. You know, and my rationale there. Uh, Rabbi, it's it's yeah. the card everyone knows, right? It's exactly. the, you know, exactly. even Billy Joel non fans or people who are, hey, I like sure. him, he's all right. They know sure. piano. You just sure. hear that first three chords yep. of the piano, ding, ding, ding. and like people know the song. And like always, karaoke, always. that's just a classic karaoke. Like it's always. Just, well oh, known. The jack. Okay. Yep. And then I so, asked you, then went, then then it's a little bit more subjective. Then I asked you, uh, what is the New York state of mind? Jackie Robinson, and you said? Uh, the 56. 56. Uh, the 56. Why did you say 56? Cops. You know, it was tough. I really thought about that. The The, the piano man came right to me. That one mm -hmm. was like a no-brainer. This one, mm -hmm. you know what I thought about? And, and even the way I explained this may not make exact sense. You know, he was traded to the New York Giants. I know. Uh, at, at And he wouldn't. He wouldn't go there, so he retired. I love, I love that part of it, yeah. by the way. Yeah, he retired nope. rather than yep. go to like the arch rival. Yeah, and so I'm thinking New York State of a mind. While New York Giants are also a New York team, as were the Brooklyn Dodgers, New York Yankees. He was so loyal to the Dodgers that he would have. Nice. He rather have he would have retired rather nice. than put on. A giant uniform. No offense. I know you're a giant no, fan, even though men take it. <laughs> but to, to take that stance, like that would probably not happen in today's day and no. age, or no. very rare. And I like that. I rationale. just thought he was in in you know, maybe if it, the song was a Dodger state of mind, it would have it would have made more sense. But no, it was cool. that state of mind that he yeah. just didn't want to play for a, a team he viewed yeah. as sort of, I don't want to say enemy, that's too strong, word, but the arch rival. The arch rivals. And that's I cool. just, I'll just i just go out as a Brooklyn Dodger. So that's why, you know, I don't know if that makes any sense, but. It actually, I think it's, it's, it's a more, it's a more thoughtful than I was going to say the 53 because it has a Brooklyn bridge, but I think yours yeah. is actually a more thoughtful, thoughtful one. So now yeah. I have a question. I have one for you. Sure. It's a deep cut, but we're both Billy Joel fans, so it's not really a deep cut for us. Uh, 
What yeah. is what is Jackie Robinson's Vienna? Yeah, and I love Vienna, and you you, oh. you explained it perfectly. A lot, if, unless you're really a, a a big huge Billy Joel guy, you, you most people, or, or if people know it, they know it because they used it in the Jennifer Garner movie Thirteen Going on Thirty. Well, done. but generally, it's not one of his. It's a great song. It should great be song probably it's an episode of more Taxi known too. than. Yeah, it, it should be more known than it actually uh, is. It's one of my favorite Billy Joel yeah, songs. Totally. Honestly. I don't know how uh, it was on the greatest hits. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. Yeah, that's a great question. We we'll have to have Billy on our show and uh, yeah. and ask him what we'll do <laughs> like on YouTube. <laughs> um, he's not too far. He lives in uh, actually. I think he's selling his house in Long Island. But uh, um, man, that's a good question. I think if if I if if I could put the qualifier that I don't actually have to own the car, but no, I yeah, no, not doing it. Okay, yeah. all right. So I don't own this. And it's not really one card. It's a series. And I think I might okay. be sort of giving it away. But um, probably the 47, the Bond bread, uh, Bonds. Jackie's. Yeah. Um, I don't own any of them. Um, as a story, I'll I'll probably tell you off the air I sp- uh, for the sake of time that I, I have uh, with it. Um, but I would say the Bond bread issues Bond because bread. They're, they're great just the same. But a lot of people don't even know about them or they're not viewed. They're not viewed in the same vein as even the the forty eight leaf or or even right. even the other issues that come up. You know, I, I, you yeah. can make an argument that and and there are people, yeah. uh, Rabbi David, that consider those rookie cards as, as yeah. well. Oh yeah, uh, and I wouldn't Definitely. argue. I w- and no, I don't own it, and I wouldn't no. argue that they aren't. They came out. No, um, I I think the 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 hiccup there is that there's more than one. It's a, a like a series yeah. of them. They yeah. didn't come out of packs per se. They no, were just but distributed not at, at 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 Yankee games and and actually at the Giants games. At the they were and they, and they made more than Jackie Robinson. Yeah, uh, they made other players as well. Um, but so that those are very significant Jackies, but people don't talk about them mm-hmm. enough, or or some people probably don't even really know a lot about them or how yeah. they were even the backstory, how they were distributed or where did they come from? And so when I think of Vienna and the Billy Joe, it's sort of, it's a great song. Those are yeah. great cards, but yeah. a lot of people aren't even familiar uh, with it. Yeah. So when you ask That's me cool. that at first, it didn't come to me. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't like as instantaneous as like the 48 leaf. <clears throat> um, I had to think about it and, and, and I start thinking about the song first, right? Yeah. I just hit the bullet points, like great song in, in its own right not really known uh, in the mainstream unless you're nope. like a real big time Billy Joel fan. Um, and I'm like, that's the bond bread issue. It's, yeah. It's, it's just, the cool. equivalent. it just, you know, it took a little bit to, to put two and two together. But then I, when I, when I came up with it, I'm like, I think I, I think I, you know, if, if, I think that's if, if a like great one. Scoble. So well, I, I was, listen, I was, I was, yeah, go ahead. Have, we just have a couple more, couple more card yeah, questions yeah, yeah, for you. I yeah. really want to ask. Okay. All right. Can a rookie card be from a traded set? I I think it can be. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I know there's some, there's some purists that are probably like, no, John, what are you talking about? Well, I, I, one that comes right off the top of my head is the 82 tops traded Cal Ripken card. Yeah. Right. That that yeah. to me that says that's now I think the Tri Stars one where he's on there with, with the other two gentlemen. Yeah. Um that's a rookie too. I'm not yeah. uh that came out in, in eighty two as well. Same season. But yeah, so I you know, I, I, I'm gonna say yes. Um, you know, some people I know I, I think the eight well here, here's a guy probably more up your alley, the eighty six tops traded Barry Bonds, right? I I, I think yeah. that's a rookie card. Yeah, right? just, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I don't know. I'm some upstream. It's, tough. And it's so tough. I just feel like the rookie card has to come from a pack. I can't go yeah. to the hobby shop. I can't buy the traded set. I yeah. almost feel like I'm, I'm like cheating somehow. If that's the, you know? but you know, that's the that's the gray area of the hobby, Rabbi David. Is there's yeah. really there's sort of unwritten rules, and then people sort of change the rules, and then yeah. then. Even the players' association and the hobby sort of came up with a criteria, and then yeah. they don't follow it to the T. 
So it's yeah. just such a blurred and, and gray yeah. area. Be it, it's the whole Maguire is the is right. the eighty five tops. Is it the eighty seven tops? And I'm I'm gonna yeah. guy like I'm I don't know if it's the majority the minority. I right. mean I think it's the eighty five tops, even though I he's think in so an too, Olympic though. uniform. It's, it's but it came out of a pack. It's pack full. So right. I, yeah, I, I get that argument. Yeah, go ahead. Cool. Last I, I can't Start. argue the argument because it makes sense. It's great. I feel like I get to ask. I get like a hobbyist. Yeah. Like these are deep thoughts I have. We got yeah, this no, one. Great. Great. Next great. one. Next one. Okay. If you are gonna get a player's card to mark the achievement, is it the year of the achievement or the year after that has the, that has the stat on the back? Like for example, the sixty-one Maris or the sixty-two with sixty-one on the back. Man, that's a great. I never really thought about it on that level. Um, that's a great question. I, you know, I, I could take the cop out answer and say can't go wrong <laughs> either way. But no, I think, I think, you know, uh, again, I'm gonna like kind of acquiesce to Ripken when he broke the 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 streak, right? Yep. And he did that lap around, yep. you know, Camden Yards, and they used that that photograph on a lot of the commemorative cards yeah. the following year. I'm, I'm going to say the following year, if you want actual scenes and pictures right. from the event, obviously right. the year of when they did it, you, it's going to be pictures from either the year before, or even sometimes they use pictures sure. three or four years old. Sure. So, okay. so, you know, I'm going to say pictures that depict, you know, well, if it's a quarterback who, who breaks a passing record, I rather have, especially if it's not going to be a rookie card anyway. It's just yeah. a, you know after his rookie season. Yeah, I rather have a picture, you know, of Dan Marino throwing the pass on the card that's the record breaker, or at least okay. from the game itself. Okay. You know sure. what I mean? Sure. So that's okay. my. I don't know if that's the right answer. It's a it's your answer. Your way. Yeah. yeah. So I'd say. Oh. I, I said the only qualifier I would put on that is if it's from a rookie year. Right. Then I think the rookie, you know, it, it, it might change my answer. But I think sure. from if it's not, I think I go with the actual card that depict what the record was and, and scenes from the night or, or the day it, it occurred. Yeah. That sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I can get one like and, that. And 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 how many times I see people post on social media, right? Like. Hey, look at that card. That's me. I'm a little speck right there, but I was at that game, and yeah. and there I am, right? And yeah. and because it's a significant event, they remember, and the card, totally. the photographer gets them in in the photo. And I yeah. think, That's you know, fun. I think you, you you can't really like, you know, what's the word like, um, minimize that fact, yeah. if, especially yeah. if you're depicted on at that event in in that card. Oh yeah. So, you know, I know you even showed a, a picture on, on your YouTube of, of where you were sitting. Like, I'm right here, you know, <laughs> like you're there, right? So, so like you, you I'm didn't wearing use, an oxygen mask. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't use like a picture from an 83 regular season game. No, you, you, no. That was from your friend, if I might not yeah. mistaken, took the yeah. photo. Yeah. And so that's where, that's where, like, hey, that's the actual, that's, that's the true. game. That's true. That's, that's the game, cool. and that's you know I think there's significance to that. You could say, "Hey, here's here's a picture from '83, and I'm sitting in this general area, but general I'm, area. I'm probably not yeah. there in the picture now." So but really you there. can point to that picture and say, "I'm there." Totally. You know, I'm, totally. You know, I think there's something to be said, you know, uh, about those. But yeah. I think a, being a rookie might change that. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Equation, you know, so. But uh, no, they're a great question. It's it's funny you don't think about some things until they get uh, thrown at you. I love that that stuff because sometimes you know you have to think about like your own answer. Like, oh, what do I feel yeah. about this? Like, yeah. you have to be totally. introspective. Yeah, absolutely. And especially yeah. if it's not something you thought about even before, you thinking about it in a sense for the the first time. I think sometimes yeah. I've been asked things like that, and I'm like, I, I hear my answer, and I'm like sort of surprised because sometimes it, it might be. A little bit more off the cuff than something else I've talked about, or or, or what have you. So, uh, well, well, listen, uh, I don't know if this was your show or my show. It doesn't matter. We're just hanging. It's all good. Yeah, we 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 had fun. 
Um, uh, I know I've said it more than once, but it's true. What you're doing is different. It's outside the box. It's important. Um, and uh, it's interesting. And whether you, you know, I didn't attend the 84 All-Star game and you made it interesting. I watched it. Yeah. Uh, in New York City, uh, 2,500 miles away. Nice. And it's funny, you're talking about stuff, it, things come back. Like, I forgot oh, yeah. about that until Rabbi David talked about it. Like, yeah. now I remember that now. Yeah, you know, that's it's, cool. It's, it's, it's funny. It brings you back, right, to oh, yeah. I was a 12-year-old kid. I was re- I hadn't started working in the card store yet. I was really into cards. I got into cards. Sure. I started when I was seven. I really ramped it up at, at nine or ten. Yeah. And so I was... I started at a, a card store at 13. So it was a year before uh, I got into the card store. What was the not, first year you started own. collecting? Were you, was it 78 tops? Uh, 79, 79. 79 tops. It was okay. uh, it was a first pack I, I got. My grandfather bought it. I asked. I, I saw him. At, I had Jaws cards. They, the tops I remember Jaws, Jaws cards. Movies, yeah. But, so I had. I don't even think I opened packs. Right? I think just some kids just hey, you want these draws cards from the movie? Sure. Like I think I just acquired them. Someone gave them to me. But the first pack I ever truly opened was I went to the corner store in Brooklyn with my with my grandfather. I was raised by my grandparents, and I saw the packs on the front counter as we were approaching, and I put two and two together from the Jaws packs. Yeah. Um, that these are baseball packs. Oh. Uh, and I'm like, Grandpa, can I have, uh, can I get a pack? He goes, I'll buy you a couple packs. And he yeah. bought me a couple packs. I didn't even get out of the store. I opened the first pack. And like the third or fourth card down was Reggie Jackson. Um, and, you know, I was a Yankee kid uh, at the time when I was young. Okay. I, I converted to a, a Mets fan. That was a whole George Steinbrenner deal there. Uh, that's a show in itself. But There's a story uh, there, at the yeah. time. Yeah, I was a Thurman Munson guy. Thurman Munson oh. was the first guy, and I've talked about this, where I I, I cried. Uh, it was the first time I realized what death was when mm. when his plane crashed, and this, you know, obviously it made huge news all over the country, but especially in New York City. Oh man! And they broke in. They broke into the regular programming. The the report that this will tell you how naive I was, Rabbi. I asked my my grandfather. Does that mean he's not going to be playing baseball next year for the Yankees? Oh. That, you know, I had oh. no concept of, oh, of course you're death kidding. and 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 life after you know anything yeah, like that. Sure. I, for all I knew, I thought we we lived forever. forever. Uh, no one ever. Oh. I, at that point, I hadn't even. I think it was five when that occurred. So I didn't even have a. I had never attended a wake or anything that yeah. I would have known, and. You know, my grandfather actually sat me down. It's funny how you remember stuff. Oh, yeah. And, you know, he said, John, I have to, you know, this is going to be tough, but I have to explain to you. And he's like, you know, we're, we're not here forever. Someday I'm going to be gone. And, and you know, and I really hit me. I'm like, no, what are you talking about, Grandpa? You know, and then he really, like, you know, I won't, you know he really laid down, like, sort of the details. And it really, the finality wow. of that hit me. You know, it was wow. more that to me, like I was worried, like he's not going to play catcher anymore. Right. You know, right. And right, then when, right. when reality set in, like not only is he not going to play, like he's not on this plane anymore. No, you know, no pun intended. Oh, like man. he's not on on earth anymore. I really, it really kind of scared me in more yeah. ways than one. Yeah. Um, that, uh, you know, I'm going to lose. So this is going to happen to people I, I know. Like I love Thurman Munson. But I really love my grandfather, Your family, and my grandma, totally. right? and my family. Like this is going to happen to people this close. It was really sort of earth-shattering, eye-opening, sad. I remember I cried probably for a good two days, you oh, know, yeah. uh, and um, at different points. Not you know, my just, and, my, uh, you know, my grand, yeah, and, and my uh, grandpa uh, just said, "John, you got to keep going." You know, I yeah, know it's sad. Yeah. I'm sad too. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, you got a lot where you, you're young and uh, we don't know when to just, you got to keep going. And when it's time, yeah. it's, and eventually you, you get, you get through it, but go ahead. You were going to, I know you're going to say, no, I was, just, I, one of my, uh, one of my best, uh, my best buddies and definitely one of my best card friends is a, a guy, uh, call him West coast, Jewish Chris. There's not too many Jewish people named Chris out there. And he used to just be Jewish Chris. 
Uh, yeah. And then I did a funeral, and one of the 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 deceased, her uh, her son, also named Chris, lives in uh, North Carolina. So he became from Jewish Chris to West Coast Jewish Chris. Grew up in New York City. Munson was his guy. I mean, you guys, his story. He just was he was inconsolable for days. That made me think of the stories he's told me. He loved Munson. Loves yeah. Him. Yeah, and 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 that to, to think even back then, you know, I was five years old to cry. I had never met him. I've been to. No. I was at the Yankee Stadium when he played. Yeah, but I was in the stands. He was behind the plate or in the batter's box yeah. Yeah. as a batter. I had never met him on a personal level. Yet I was so traumatized and sad of his passing, as if I knew him or yeah. like on a different level. And that's that. You know what these players can mean. Uh, to you and and yeah. and 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 life yeah. lessons there. That was how I learned yeah. that there's a finality uh, to life uh, above ground. You know, big time. And, um, big time. Uh, I wish it didn't happen, uh, but it was. There's a lesson in there uh, too that to to never take anything for granted and no. to to keep going and enjoy things uh, as they happen. And because you don't know, yeah. you know, you don't no. know, and um, no. Uh, and to even think now, you know, I'm not saying I don't get emotional if someone, maybe a celebrity or an athlete passes yeah. away. I yeah. have, yeah. but never to, to that level. I think John Lennon um, did that too. And I yeah. again, I never met John oh. Lennon, but he was just an icon of, of music and culture. And, you know, someone asked me like, who would really get you like now, if, you know, and I hate to say, it, and I hope it's, Later, you know, when Billy Joel yeah. goes, I'm that will be a sad day. I've yeah. again, I've, I've been to concerts, but I've never met yeah, him I'm or shook sure. his hand. But just what he means to me, and and you know, that'll be a day it, it hits me. I'm sure I'll, oh, you know, I'll have uh, you know, Billy Joe on uh, on uh, endless play for a few days or the for whole sure. week, and more for than sure. I already I already listen to him a lot but <laughs> there'll be uh be more and and again I'm I hope that's later than this long week, long but, time away yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, you know it, it's funny the the relationships you can you can bond with with you don't have to meet somebody I mean I think it's it's more special too when you actually know somebody and yeah a different a different level but yeah. um you know diff for different reasons right like, yeah uh, you know the uh, music gets you through some some tougher times, or, or, and you can equate music to a, a happy point. And and hey, that oh, album yeah. came back. That was a great year for me. Oh uh, yeah, you know what I mean. So you, oh yeah, we do that with music. I think we do that with sports yeah. as well. You know, for sure. It, so it's funny how we can. Uh, I, I I tell a quick story. We have a, a drive-in uh, movie theater. It's 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 been torn down now, but. Um, Years ago, I was, you know, the way it was set up, you could like not be in it and just driving on the street. Oh, you can see, behind, and you can see the screen. Sure, and, <laughs> <laughs> it's a story, but I gotta tell it. So it was Friday the 13th. I'm not sure oh, which yeah. one it was, um, but it was one of them, maybe three or four. And it was playing, and it was a scene where a guy gets like a harpoon through him. Uh, you know, one of the best you drove scenes. fast and saw it. Well, I'm driving, and on the radio was Steve Winwood's Higher Love was playing. <laughs> okay, and that's not part of the Friday the 13th soundtrack, <laughs> but to this day, I kid you not, it's the goofiest thing. Whenever <laughs> I hear Steve Winwood, Steve Winwood's Higher Love. I think of Friday the Thirteenth Part, whatever that was in that scene. <laughs> there is no correlate. There's no correlation. It wasn't on the soundtrack. Steve Winwood was never mentioned in the film, <laughs> but because that scene was in my mind and that was song was coming out of the radio. Oh man! Um, just and we do that, right? We do that with with soundtracks, right? With mu the, with a song, and and we're we're somewhere we attribute. That's on to a feeling or a place. Yeah. And, uh, maybe not on that. That's that was first, that's so I didn't know where you were going yeah. with that. It's really funny. Yeah. I, I, I was once, I, there was once a, a drive in by my house where, and I grew up in Nevada, so Marin County, and yeah. up in, in Sonoma, there was a drive in right off of 101. And it had at some point in time turned from a drive in to a, an, a, an adult drive in. 
<laughs> my brother and I, every time we drive by, we crane our heads. There'd be a little spar you could see, stick our heads out the window, anything to see something, man. Never saw anything, but would tell ourselves we saw something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, man. That's funny. It's funny. Like, and, and that's that's how our minds work. That's yeah, how, I always think of that. Forever, I will attribute Steve Winwood's higher Steve love to, <laughs> to Friday the 13th, part three, and that's that specific so funny, scene. Dude. And That's if I, funny. you know, I don't know if I've, if I, I've seen the movie without driving, but even if I've watched the movie in my living room, in my mind, and that scene comes up, I'm hearing Thank how you love. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome, really man. I don't know he's on the side, <laughs> but uh, I do. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> but that's, but, you know, I tell that because it, that, that's how our minds work. Whatever yeah. feeling or emotion and whatever's going on in the moment will, you know, you attribute that song. You know, maybe someone yeah. breaks up and they're driving and the song comes on the radio. That song's oh, not yeah. written Forever. for them or that specific no. scenario. Yeah. But we're, we we do that. We put songs, especially music. We Always. put music to a time. And, Always. Or a place. And, and that's was completely just a random thing. I yeah. just happened to be looking at the – it just happened that to moment. be that scene. And yeah. the rest is – the rest is, yeah. you know, totally. Paramount new movie history that Such they don't a know. Strange thing. That they don't. <laughs> no. You didn't know we were going to talk no. about Steve Winwood and I go anywhere. I'm, I'm a yes. <laughs> man. Uh, always a yes. Super good. Well, well, Rabbi David, we'll we'll have you on again. Obviously, we, we I, I get the question. We could probably do a, a four hour show. It I don't know if fun. anyone else will like it, but just we'll, the two we'll of us, no one listening. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I appreciate it, man. I love what you're Thank doing. You. That's not lip. Thanks, John. That's not lip service, and um, uh, I think it's important too. And uh, there's a lot of important messages besides uh, the '84 All Star Game, which is a, was you. a great event uh, in its own right. And uh, so I don't have to tell you this. Uh, keep it Thank up. Uh, I'll be uh, I'll be listening for, for what's coming around the, the turnpike. Congratulations Always. on Thank the maze, you. and uh, love you. to have you. Uh, on again. Give out uh, before you, uh, you know, give out where people can can listen to what I've uh, sure. so, uh, enjoyed myself. Sure. Websites, social medias, anything you, you want to do. Sure, 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 sure. Absolutely. Can I actually do, I have a couple of, can I do one thing that's not one of the yeah. things you're inviting me to do? So sure. uh, yeah, yeah. I have a few different things I'm collecting. And when I, I got back into the hobby, it, I kind of looked at for me the ultra modern while it was kind of cool. I'm like, wait, this all can't be the worth. All this much money, right? Like I, I got black, Is this the black obsidians? Yes. So uh, yeah, I, go ahead, go I ahead. thank you. So I, I, this is the only real ultra modern I collect. I have a couple of Nick Bosa cards, but this is a, a 2020 obsidian supernova, uh, and this is the McCaffrey. It's a one of one, uh, and I'm trying. I'd love to get them all in one of one, but I've either one of one or one of five. It's a 20 card obsidian insert set. Uh, and I have seven of the 101s. I have 10 out of five and I have one out of um, one out of 10. So I'm trying to trying to get as many as I can. One out of one. I'm patient. I feel like this is the kind of thing that uh, as these kind of cards go down in value, more and more will surface. But I just would love to put it out to your audience. It's a 2020 yeah. Panini Obsidian Supernova. Uh, I'm looking for it. Uh, it's an electric edge, blue finite, one of one. The two, I don't have it all. I don't have the the McCaffrey or the I'm not the uh, McCaffrey. I don't have the uh, Herbert or the Brady. The Brady is a story of heartbreak. I don't want to go through it. I, I miss an opportunity <laughs> on that. I, it's a no. Yeah. It's a I can't end there. Yeah. Um. But so we could do a show. We that might be a future show. Ones cards, we got away. Cards we yeah. regret not. Uh, yeah. When we I, had a chance so I was going to say. Uh, so my my I'm on Instagram at uh, Rated Rabbi R A T E D R A B B I Rated Rabbi. And the podcast is the Rated Rabbi, uh, Rated Rabbi podcast where sports cards and pop culture meet the 1984 All-Star Game. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's on YouTube. Uh, I'm kind of a lagger on Spotify. I need to fix that up. Um, and just reach out. I really, I just I appreciate you, John. I really appreciate this hobby. It's, it's a really, um, I just meet so many nice people and I just, I've really also learned how to, um, or I'm still learning, but I've learned a lot more how to just kind of cut out the noise 
Like, I don't need to hear another person tell me about how fanatics is going to 10x the hobby. I don't. <laughs> wonderful. Great. But like, so like, yeah. I don't need all that. Again, I've been able to cut through that. And I've just found some some great uh, podcasters like yourself and, and others um, and just really nice, nice people. And I really appreciate you and the hobby. I have those stickers you mentioned. I have more. And if anybody wants one, just send me a message on Instagram and I'd be happy to uh, send you a rate of Best logo in the game. No, no, hands down. Oh, very, I appreciate very it. Well done. If you don't I have it, a, thank you. you. Not in the hobby until you have a rated rabbi sticker. Like officially, that's <laughs> like all this time, I, all these forty years until I got that. It was like I was just going. I was just going through the motions. So, <laughs> uh, but no, all awesome. joking aside, uh, you, you, your content is is beyond excellent. It's different. Thank you. Thank that's you. hard to do. That's thank hard you. to. It's, not only is it hard to do, it's like I said when we were talking earlier, not only is it hard to do, but it's hard to do very good. Like you people who try it yeah. and, and fail, uh, yeah. which I would do if I even attempted something along those type of yeah. lines. Uh, but you're you you do it in a way, like I said, even for me, it just brings me back to the game that I watched uh, on a TV set yeah. rather than live. Yeah, but you, you forget things about that game. I forget, uh, you know, that they pan the Joe D. You know, he's a San totally. Fran, if I'm not mistaken, he's a San Francisco guy. Yeah, yeah. and he's so probably, handsome. He like got more yeah. handsome as he got older. And Cosell lost his mind. He goes, Cosell goes, they, they cut to him and Cosell goes, he makes this involuntary sound. He goes like, oh. <laughs> and, he goes, and he goes, he goes, gets more handsome with age. It's amazing. It's, oh. Yeah, it's it's just so up. many backstories. Yeah. Through that game, like you said, and to put it, forget even the content, which is great, but to do the set, uh, and, and put All that right. collection together, Thank right? You. Uh, just Thank you're doing it on, on so many different levels, and, and Thanks, a great man. example of you can collect any way you want to, there's no wrong way, as long as you're yeah. doing it legally, there's no wrong way to uh, yeah. to have you, right? And that's, and right. that's important. I think, sometimes, I think sometimes that message doesn't get sent uh, enough, it's too much like. It's got to be about dollar signs only, and yeah, and it's beautiful. It doesn't. Hobby. It doesn't. No. Yep. No. Well, we'll we'll have to do this again for, uh, for sure. Absolutely. I appreciate you you making some time, and uh, thank you uh, again. Continued success. Uh, Same David. to you. Thanks for all you do thank in the you. hobby, and thanks for having me on. All it right. really really means I, a lot. Well, thank. I appreciate it. Thank you.